Good morning, everybody. Today is the last day of February, February 28th. And I am here in Enfield, New Hampshire. Very exciting today. You're going to get to visit a shrine with me. This is the shrine to Our Lady of La Salette in Enfield, New Hampshire. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> Snowplow. You can see it's still snowy. Beautiful. That all who hunger be fed, and that all who are sick be healed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christians of every tradition enter a true spirit of unity in this holy time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and after giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. So today, we are here at Our Lady of La Salette Shrine in Enfield, New Hampshire, and I've got the pleasure to get to speak with Father who just celebrated Mass, and this is Father John Sullivan. Father, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and the shrine? Okay, sure, I'd be glad to. Um, first of all, welcome. I'm glad yeah. you <laughs> folks could be with us for Mass today. Yeah, well, I'm a, a missionary of Our Lady of La Salette, so we're one of the few men's communities that were started directly from an apparition of the Mother of God. So we started well, she appeared in, in 1846 in, in France, way up in the Alps. I've been there a few times. Oh, wow. In, in uh, September 19th. And uh, her last words were, make this message known to all my people. So it's a message of prayer, of reconciliation, which is a key word in our, our rule and our spirituality. Mm. And, then, and then the works of mercy, you know, reaching out to others. So, um, all good things for Lent, too. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, you <laughs> I mean, your... we should be doing it throughout our life. Right. right. But... You could bet your Bible on that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, can anyway. I quote that? <laughs> you can bet your Bible on that. I like that. All right. Or your rosary, whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I was ordained in 1970, so I'm a, a priest for over half a century, and I'm, I'm Thank grateful, you. grateful for that. So I, I've worked in, in South America as well as here in, in this country. But I've been here at, uh, at, at La Salette and Enfield for the past seven years from Boston. Bow your heads, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Holy man. Uh, but anyway, uh, but here right, right behind us is a, is a beautiful example of the apparition. It's, it's a major apparition that was fully approved by Rome shortly, five years after, after And it's it, not it took one place. that you really hear about that often. I mean, I know personally, I didn't hear about yeah. Our Lady of La Salette until recently, actually. That's right, yeah. So, well, depending might, on yeah. where yeah. you are or how well she's being celebrated, but. Yeah, well, in, in some, some ways, it, it's a very biblical apparition, very strong her references to her son. She, she she appeared to two little children. If you just take a picture of the, of, of the, uh, the dialogue, that was Maximum, he was 11 years old, and Melanie, she was only uh, about 14 years old. And they were very humble children. And Mary is like a you know, chip off the old block. I mean, she, has, she loves the poor. It's just, yeah, just, it's just beautiful. Anyway, she, she picked those two little children to be her witness. 
of, of her message. So she first appeared weeping, sitting on a stone, crying. And that I don't know of another apparition where that appears so vulnerable. And, and why is she crying? It's because we don't respect the name of her son, because we don't go to church the way we could. We just don't obey him. And so she, uh, so she appeared, and they didn't know who it was. They just they thought it was a woman, just from the one of the little villages that she had been beaten by her son, perhaps, and she had gone out to the hillside to to cry. And so, but she stood up, and she said right to the children, she says, "Come near, don't be afraid. I have I have good news for you." <laughs> And I find that so, so biblical, you know, how often Jesus said, don't be afraid, and I give you my peace. So she said, so, so the kids ran up right close to her, and that's, that's the dialogue scene. And she, uh, and she went on talking about, uh, you know, that the, the, the people who drive the carts, they, they swear and they take my son's name in vain, uh, and, they, and the people, just the old people go to church on on, 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 during the winter time, and other people make fun of it. And she, she said, and these are the things that make the arm of my son so heavy. And so she's calling for reconciliation, for healing. And so that, that's the La Salette Cross, which is very unique. And she wore that right on her breast, you can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what we think, it was never explained to us, but we believe that the, the hammer is how we continue to crucify Jesus in today's world, mm. you know, through the violence and, and arrogance and so on. But our work is reconciliation, the pliers, you know, taking out the nails, trying to heal the, 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 the discord between God and us, but also between us and one another. Mm. You know, trying to overcome those divisions to bring us to that the prayer of oneness, which is Jesus's prayer, which I love. That that was, I put that on my ordination card. I pray, Father. <laughs> Sorry for my Irish emotion, but <laughs> <laughs> <I love it. laughs> you're so you're so precious and full of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for sharing. I pray that they may be one, as you and I are one. That the world may believe that you love them, even as you love me. And I find that such a beautiful prayer. And that's, that's our mission, all of us, you know, married or single or priest or sister or brother. We, we all have that mission to be a sign of that oneness, mm. each with our own personality. So mm. I'm, I'm grateful to have you guys here and mm. blessings on your travel Thank too. You. Can right. you tell me when this shrine here was established? Uh, yes, yeah, actually we're uh, right across the street, is, it wasn't too bad snowing, but you, there's a big tall building over there. It's called, it's called um, the Great Dome Dwelling. <laughs> and that was the Shaker community. And they, they call this the, uh, they call it the, uh, the, the Chosen Veil. And they came there before the Civil War. And they, um, and they, they formed several Shaker communities around, especially on the East Coast. And, but that building is the tallest building that they ever put up. It's five stories, and that was there where they would dance. That the Shakers would they call. Sometimes they would go into ecstasy, hmm. and that's how they called them the Shakers. And it was the men and women separated, but they. But anyway, so they they left in, in about 1923, 1924, mm -hmm. after being here 150 years, and they they farmed this land, and they were very. Hmm industrious, real respect between women and men and community and so on. So when they left, uh, they, they gave us the property. We bought it from them at a very good saving <laughs> <laughs> uh, because they knew we were Christian. Mm. And so we would continue that, you know, sort of their focus on God. So we've been here, we, we, the shrine is almost a, a hundred years. In wow. 19, 20, 27, 28 is when we came. And we, we, first it was a, a, a minor seminary, so a, a, a student studying to be priest for high school. Uh, we always had a beautiful camp, you know, right across is, is Lake Moscoma, a beautiful piece of property. I, I love living out here. And then also the shrine. Mm -hmm. And so we used to have 
30 or 40 people. And now we just have another priest or myself, you know, Father Joe, if, a frog and a harp. So we have <laughs> Frenchmen and Irishmen, but we get along well together. And But we, I ask the people to pray for vocations, huh? That's so needed. And to know that, uh, you know, I, I'm grateful for my priesthood. And I, and I just really hope that young people don't be afraid to to listen to the voice of God, you know, mm. the depth of their own heart, and let their families encourage them. You know, both my folks were born in Ireland, so I I have green blood, so. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm very grateful for the support I got, and I hope that, that your traveling around can really inspire young people to think about listening to God and the call to the consecrated life. Well, so. We are so grateful for you, for your yes to your vocation, to the yeah. La Salette. Yeah, uh, thank you. For, for them, and we'll yeah. pray for them and pray for vocations. And yeah. thank you for all the um, information that you gave us and, your, yeah. and sharing your heart with yeah. us. And I pray that we pray for, for you. Yeah. And we just pray for our world to really heed the words of the Blessed Mother. Yeah. Right? And to, yeah. Uh, to, to pray. You know, Father, so beautifully today at Mass in the Gospel was the Our Father. Um, that Gospel of Jesus giving that prayer. And, mm -hmm. and you shared so beautifully. Um, do you mind sharing it again? Just that little bit about, about what Our Lady of La Salette said about yeah. prayer and the importance of prayer. Yeah, well, part of her dialogue was that at one, she only asked a few questions, but one of her questions was, children, do you say your prayers well, my children? That's right over there. That, that's our theme for Lent. And, and so, uh, so the kids, in all their honesty, said, oh, well, not that well. <laughs> and she, she said, well, try to pray. You know, pray in the morning and the evening. Uh, and when, if you don't have time, at least pray the Our Father and the Hail Mary. That's great that the mother, the greatest saint, you know, after Jesus, that Jesus, oh, the Son of God and his mother, that she could teach us the Our Father and, and the Hail Mary. He says, but when you have time, pray more. <laughs> A very maternal, loving gesture. And I just find it is so important that we pray, but we also work, it's the works of mercy, you know, mm. like Faustina, that they're, they're inseparably bound, yeah. you know, the prayer and the action. Yeah. And that was pretty much yesterday's gospel, right? About uh, yeah. what you do for the least of these, you do for yeah, me. Right. It's all about the works of mercy yesterday and today about the prayer, so. Yes. Right, right, exactly. There's a lot of work yeah. to be to be done, and and it's encouraging because you know sometimes as people age, they can't always do as much physically, but you can never yeah. not pray. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, right, right, right. And prayer is it, uh, what somebody described it to me. Prayer is simply as unlimited awareness. Mm. I, I find that striking. Mm -hmm. Prayer makes us aware of the beauty of life, the tragedy of life too, but, but always with that beauty. You know, yeah. like, like Dorothy Day said, uh, you know, we, we shall be saved by beauty. Mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, so it, it just, uh, but I'm grateful to know that La Salette is out in St. Louis where you folks are from. And, yeah. and uh, we, have a, we have shrines all over the, the world. We're an international community. We, we work in about 25 countries. Uh, and, uh, but uh, we have many shrines, but of course the main one is where she actually appeared and uh, way up in the Alps in France. Well, God uh, willing, maybe we'll go there one day. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father Solomon. All right. You are a gift and a blessing. I'm just so yeah. grateful to be here today to celebrate Mass with you and, okay. and to get to hear from your heart and your wisdom. So. All right, and just remember those words of Mary. She said it twice, that, you know, make this message known to all my people, the message of reconciliation. She said it twice, maybe because, well, I'm Irish and we can be thick-headed, so <laughs> she said it twice. But I, and I'm grateful for, as a missionary, I worked in 18 years in Argentina, mm. where the Pope is from, and I really enjoyed that. And 
And, but we all, we're all missionaries. And I love Pope Francis. We are missionary disciples. Mm -hmm. That's our identity. And that message yeah. of reconciliation, you know, we obviously we have that available to us in the sacrament of confession. Right, exactly. But it yeah. is that it, it's that over overarching theme of mercy, right? That Oh yeah. Yeah, right. And Saint Paul, you know, he says it. That's in our rule. We are ambassadors of reconciliation. Mm. I love that from in Corinthians. Come back to me with yeah. all your heart. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Can I bless you both? You Please, guys bless, are, and you'll bless people. everybody who's watching yeah. too. <laughs> all right. Well, may the Lord bless you all, and, and especially on this shrine dedicated to the apparition of Mary. May, may her love for her son be an inspiration to all of us to really be signs of the unity of God to love as he has first loved us. So may the Lord bless you both and all the people you care about. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm, thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, you're so all right. <laughs> this little ladybug, I just went to the bathroom here at the shrine and this little ladybug climbed on my book in the bathroom. <laughs> in this freezing weather, I think that's a good sign. <laughs> I love all God's creatures. Today is the first Tuesday of Lent, and as Father mentioned, this is one of the ways, the first way that our Blessed Mother appeared to the two children and at Our Lady of La Salette. And I just think it's a beautiful statue, so we're going to stand by her and Hopefully comfort her with our, our prayers. So we pray together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. At the beginning of Lent, I asked my confessor for some mortification for this time of fast. I was told not to cut down on my food, but while eating, to meditate on how the Lord Jesus on the cross accepted vinegar and gall. This would be my mortification. I did not know that this would be so beneficial to my soul. The benefit is that I am meditating constantly on his sorrowful passion. And so while I am eating, I'm not preoccupied with what I am eating, but I'm reflecting on my Lord's death. And Jesus said to me, my daughter, know that your ardent love and the compassion you have for me were a consolation to me in the Garden of Olives. Most sweet Jesus, set on fire my love for you and transform me into yourself. Divinize me that my deeds may be pleasing to you. May this be accomplished by the power of the Holy Communion, which I receive daily. Oh, how I greatly, I desire to be wholly transformed into you, O oh Lord. Dear Lord, give me strength to bear my crosses and to offer my sufferings in union with you and your mother, Our Lady of Sorrows. Amen. And Our Lady of La Salette, pray for us. All right. Love you guys. Praying for you all. And please pray for me. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>